and we'll start by looking at the primer bulb system first because obviously this is the area where we're going to bring the fuel in initially into the carburetor to prime it. So we'll start by looking at the few key components on the primer bulb side. So we'll first remove the primer bulb retainer by removing these four screws. Yes, I'm using a flat headed screwdriver here, even though it's a Phillips type screw. But because these screws aren't very tight at all, I know I can do this. So first of all then, we've got the fuel bulb and its retainer, and that's just been removed. And underneath that is a special pink rubber valve within a black plastic metering diaphragm cover. There'll be more on the function of all of these components very soon. And under the metering diaphragm cap is of course the metering diaphragm and the metering diaphragm gasket. And that leaves us now with the metering system itself, which is here. Removing that now reveals the fuel pump diaphragm and its gasket. And that's pretty much it for the primer bulb system. So we've got the fuel pump gasket, then we've got the fuel pump diaphragm, then we've got the metal metering system, then we've got the metering gasket, and then we've got the metering diaphragm, then we've got the metering diaphragm cap with the special rubber valve, then we've got the primer bulb and its retainer. So that's simply the sequence of the components. There's nothing more complicated than that. But what if one might say, well, what if I take this apart and then I put the gaskets and the diaphragms on the wrong way round? That's quite difficult to do as well. As long as you've got the sequence of what goes where, it's difficult to put the components on the wrong way round. And that's because if you take a look at the gasket as I'm putting it on, there are two holes at the end of the gasket and they go on to the two raised points onto the body of the carburettor. And when you look at the cutouts within the gasket, you can see they match that on the carburettor body. And it's the same story with the diaphragm. The two holes at the end of the diaphragm go over the two raised points. And if you tried to put this on upside down, then the cutouts wouldn't match the cutouts on the carburettor body and the gasket underneath it. It's exactly the same story with the metering system. There's two holes at the bottom that fit over the two raised points that the gasket and the diaphragm just did. It's the flat side that touches the diaphragms and it would be difficult to go wrong there. So in comes next the metering gasket. That's got two holes again in it and that sits on the raised points on the carburettor's body. And again you couldn't get this the wrong way around because on the opposite side there's a hole which again matches a hole on the body. And the metering diaphragm just the same. The holes on the end of that are placed over the raised points. And then it's the same with the plastic metering cover. And then with the primer bulb sufficiently within the retainer, the retainer is then placed on top with the extended part of the retainer facing in the opposite direction outwards away from the fuel pipe's inlet and outlet. So there's probably less components to the primer bulb system than what you might have originally thought. And now we've taken a look at the components, let's have a look at how they function. So of course, to prime this carburetor, we have to press the primer bulb. And so when we do that, the air that's occupied inside the primer bulb is forced out down through the center of that pink rubber valve. So let's take a close look at this valve to understand it. When it's removed from the metering cover, you can see it takes on this kind of mushroom shape. And on the end there, at the tip, there's a one-way valve. So, when in its rightful place, or in situ, the air is forced down the centre of this mushroom shape, through that one-way valve, then through a special pipeway within the plastic body cover, out through the return, where the fuel goes back to the fuel tank. And so, after the primer bulb has been pressed, and now released, that now draws up more air from deep within the carburetor from another special pipe in the plastic metering cover into the primer bulb again. So there's suction pressure going into the primer bulb. And of course it's the raising of the primer bulb back into its original shape that's created that suction pressure beneath it. And it's the structure of this special valve that allows the suction pressure in from a different direction than the return. And the way it does that 
is in its very simple but very clever design. Because when it's in its rightful place, this valve sits on top of a pipe system that goes right round its radius just underneath its mushroom shaped top. So if this was fitted into its correct place and we could see through underneath it, when the primer bulb raises, it draws in the air from underneath it. And that draws in air into the bulb from the pipe that's coming from within the carburetor. When any air tries to come back this way, it just naturally closes that rubber flap and stops it. And because of that, the primer bulb raising makes it so that air can only come from this pipe underneath this large round flap. So now we know that there's suction pressure coming into the primer bulb, but from where within the carb is this pressure sucking up from? Well, to see that, we'll have to remove the primer bulb and its retainer, the metering diaphragm cover, the metering diaphragm and its gasket, and now we can see a little better. This is the metering chamber, and it's connected by this channel way to the piping network that goes through the plastic metering lid. And because it's all connected, the suction pressure here from the primer bulb is felt down here inside the metering chamber. So we could imagine then, when the metering gasket and the metering diaphragm are in their correct place, this suction pressure will pull the diaphragm down. So let's imagine we can see through the diaphragm to see what that's doing. As the diaphragm lowers, it pushes down on the back of the metering lever. That levers up the metering needle this end, which is also a valve that allows suction pressure to come up from deeper down inside the carb. So we'll see where the pressure is drawing from when we take a look at the underside of this metering system. The suction pressure is felt here and it pulls through to the bottom of the needle valve and then it passes the sides of the needle valve and out into the metering area. And we'll see how all of this interacts with the fuel pump diaphragm beneath it. So it's a fact that the suction pressure is felt here and it's going in this direction. And so now let's imagine that we can see through the metering system at what is going on and how the diaphragm works alongside this. One thing to notice now though is the pipe network that's built inside the metal block of the metering system itself. You can see there in green that there are four main pipes or fuel tubes. And so if we look at it clearly now without the metering system block but at the same time know that these tubes are part of the block. I've just shown it like this so we can see things clearer. Then now we can start to see where that suction pressure is affected. And so as I've just shown, the suction pressure is felt down here and it pulls through past the metering needle before coming out into the metering chamber. And that now means that because the needle is in the raised position, it's off its seat, so the valve is open, then the pressure can be felt all the way back here. And it draws this first valve flap on the diaphragm down. And when that diaphragm's down, the pressure can be felt back through the fuel tube here, and all the way back through the fuel pump system itself on the fuel pump diaphragm, which you'll see working in a moment. It pulls through a second fuel tube and this tiny chamber, and just the same as it drew the first valve flap down, it draws this second valve flap down as well. And that then allows the pressure to continue to be felt behind it in this third fuel tube. Then the pressure can be felt in this little chamber, and that pulls through down the fuel inlet pipe from the fuel tank. So in a nutshell, suction pressure comes down the fuel inlet pipe all the way round the fuel pump system, up past the needle valve and into the metering system, and then out of the metering system, through the channel way and through the pipe network, and into the primer bulb, all as it raises. And we know that to prime these types of carburetors, initially, we have to press the bulb more than once. So at this stage then, we now press the bulb again. And so the same happens again, air is pushed through the centre of that special rubber valve and out into the return towards the fuel tank.
The air can only go down the centre and out through the return. It can't go back down through the pipework from where the air was drawn in from. And that's because when the primer bulb's pressed and the air is forced downwards, it pushes that large round valve flap firm on its seat over that piping network and so doesn't allow any past there. We release the bulb again and we've got the suction pressure coming through the bottom of the carburetor and right up to the bulb as we did before. Press it down again and we get it out to the return. And then after we've done this enough times, the primer bulb will then raise and the suction pressure it's creating will start to draw in fuel through the inlet pipe from the fuel tank. And we can see the path that that's going to take before it's drawn up past the needle valve out through the top where it fills the metering reservoir. And the pressure from above keeps drawing it through into this channel and then up through the other fuel way in the plastic metering cover and then into the primer bulb. Now of course as the operator we can see fuel in the primer bulb and when we press it again there's now going to be fuel going out through the return back to tank. And so that's why we can see that fuel in one of the pipes going towards the carburetor and in the other one going back to the fuel tank as we continually press the primer bulb. So let's just take another look of what just happened from a different angle. We'll separate the carb into the three main components. So initially we pick up the machine with an empty carburetor and we press the primer bulb. The air inside the primer bulb goes to the return and then as the primer bulb raises it draws through the suction pressure and fills the whole system with fuel. Yes it might take a few presses but that in a nutshell is what happens. And once it's full and primed no matter how many times we press the bulb you can see that flow going through the carburetor. When it's pressed it goes out to the return and then when it raises it comes in from the fuel tank all the way through the system. So now the system is primed, we're ready to start the engine. And so what happens within this carburetor then to allow the engine to start and run? Well, if we look at the now fully primed metering system, we'll see that there's a tiny hole underneath the back of the metering lever, which is basically an entrance to a fuel way which runs through this part of this block and down into the main body of the carburetor through a tiny special hole in the fuel pump diaphragm beneath. This fuel way continues to extend through the main body of the carburetor and into the inlet area or the induction tube and becomes the main jet and the fuel supply for the engine. And with the engine now started and running and it's drawing fuel out of the carburetor, it starts to empty the metering reservoir and as the fuel starts to leave the metering reservoir through the main jet, it too creates a suction pressure pulling down on the diaphragm. And as we saw before, the lowering of the diaphragm pushes down on the back of the metering lever, which raises the metering needle valve at the front, allowing more fuel into the metering reservoir, so there's a continuation of fuel for the engine. The fuel pump below, which is part of the fuel pump diaphragm, has now taken over responsibility from the primer bulb to pump fuel all the way around the carburetor and make sure that there's always a good supply here for the engine. The fuel pump pumps as fast as the piston travels up and down inside the engine. And the way this little pump works is simple and remarkable. First of all, if we remove the carburetor enough, to see this little hole on the inlet manifold right there underneath the inlet and then this tiny hole on the carburetor. When the carburetor's in place these two holes are connected with a gasket in the middle like this. And when connected and when the engine is running they both experience pressures. And what do I mean by that? So the area to focus in on now is this tiny hole in the carburetor. And that's this hole here on this illustration on the side of the carb body. And I'm purposefully showing you the carburetor stripped down like this and in just a moment you'll see why. But when the engine is running and the piston is moving up and down inside the cylinder, 
Each time the piston lowers, it creates a positive pushing pressure through this hole, through into the carburetor's hole, and into this fuel pump chamber. And when the piston goes back up, it creates a suction pressure pulling out of that chamber. And so that means, of course, when the fuel pump diaphragm is fitted in its rightful place, when the piston lowers, it pushes pressure underneath the diaphragm and lifts this part up. And when the piston rises, it creates the suction pressure and pulls this part down. So each time the piston reciprocates, this area of the diaphragm moves up and down, as I've said, at the same rate the piston is moving. Showing that in a different perspective, if the fuel pump diaphragm is pressed up against the bottom face of this block, then we can see that each time the piston raises, it creates a suction pressure underneath it and draws down this part of the diaphragm. And as this part of the diaphragm lowers, that in itself draws in fuel above it from the inlet from the fuel tank. And then when the piston lowers, it creates a pushing pressure which pushes this part of the diaphragm, pushing the fuel above it, this way up through the metering needle past the valve and into the metering reservoir. And so that cycles and cycles as fast as the piston reciprocates up and down. So you could imagine the amount of fuel that's pumped through the carburetor. The excess fuel that isn't used for the engine naturally goes through the system, through the primer bulb and out through the return back to tank. But as the fuel is drawn down the main jet into the induction tube to be used in the engine, that amount that's available for the engine is variable by the single adjuster screw on these types of carburetors. So we can see that this single adjuster screw actually screws into the main body of the carburetor and its tip terminates in the fuel flow of the main jet before it's drawn out into the induction tube. And so simply, the more this screw is screwed in, the more it restricts the amount of fuel coming out of the main jet for the engine. And the more it's screwed out, the more fuel is allowed out of the main jet for the engine, depending on the engine's needs. And this, of course, is how we set the fuel-to-air ratio, the fuel-to-air mix going into the engine. And lastly, let's take a look at the somewhat unique plastic barrel type throttle mechanism on these carburetors. And I will quickly remove this barrel and show you what it looks like. It's basically a barrel with an opening and a needle. And when this barrel mechanism is inserted into the main block of the carburetor, the needle is inserted into the main jet. And so when the machine is not running and the carburetor is not in use, this throttle barrel sits inside the main body of the carburetor, something like this, in its closed position. But when the throttle trigger is pressed on the machine, it pulls the throttle cable, and the throttle cable pulls this throttle lever that's attached to the rotating barrel. And that opens up the throttle to allow air into the carburetor for the engine to start and run. And as the throttle barrel turns, there's a slight lift in it, pulling back the needle slightly in the main jet, allowing more of the fuel out. So that just about covers everything I wanted to say about how this type of carburetor works, and I'm hoping now that these carbs are not such a mystery to you. So you can go ahead and try and fault find with these and even repair them yourself. So now you probably know a lot more than your local repair centre about how these work. And if you like that video, then you might like this one. And if you haven't done so already, please subscribe and I'll be back soon. Thank you for watching.